welcome to <laughs> Portland County Historical Society. My name is Tabitha Scoble. I'm the assistant director here. And I have a few things to talk about before I introduce our speaker today. Uh, one of which is our exits. When you came in this door, if there were an emergency, you could go back out that door. But there is another exit at the back of the room. And it is unlocked so that everyone can exit quickly. Uh, also, we have a raffle in the hallway. If you haven't had a chance to get raffle tickets, we'll do that a little bit more at the end. It's just a way for us to help uh, do two things. We still have a lot of Attic Treasures things in the basement, so we're upcycling. <laughs> and we're trying to, you know, just raise a little money for our coffee fund for these programs. Also, the refreshments. If you haven't gotten refreshments already, please grab some on the way out so we don't eat them all. <laughs> and please sign a book if you didn't do so on the way in. We do keep track of where people come from and, you know, things like that for our records. Also, consider becoming a member to support programs like this and to uh, preserve Portland County history. We have a rich history here and we love to share it. But in order to do that, we do need to continue operating and take care of the things that we do have. And your membership helps. One last thing is please silence your cell phones if you haven't done that already. Um, and then I'm going to introduce our speaker, Peg Ross. Peg is the historian of the town of Green. And she is going to tell us all about octagon houses, including ones that used to be in Portland County. So thank you very much for coming, Peg. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to be here. Um, I, I changed my program a little bit to sort of focus on Cortland County as much as I could. There aren't a lot of octagon houses in Cortland County, but I'll show you what I have. Uh, I'd like to mention how I got interested in all this. <laughs> Just seems kind of an odd thing to be interested in, but I got an email a few years ago from a woman in Wisconsin who had written a book about octagon houses, and I thought it was pretty smart of her. She sent emails to all the historians she could find in the United States and said that maybe you'd be interested in this book. Well, I was. I did, I did buy it, and I found it very interesting. And, but what's even better, she has a website now. It's called octagon.bobanna. I have no idea why it's bobanna.com. <laughs> And it's just great. She keeps up, she's upgrading it all the time because they're finding new information or they're finding new houses even. And I'd like to show you how she finds some of her, her octagons. She uses Google Maps quite a bit. And it's, they're very, very easy smart, to smart, see smart. from the That's air. Cool. Huh? This one, they have, I made it local, it's Guilford, which I'll show you a little bit later. And there, there's another one. I don't even remember where that was, but they're just so easy for her to find. Another way are the bird's eye maps. I know you had a, a talk here about bird's eye maps with Chris Buck not too long ago, but they were done of lots of communities where a person went in and illustrated the village or the town. They usually tried to get up a, a, a hill or someplace to to do it. And this one was in Binghamton, but it's not there anymore. You can see it was 1890. A lot of those 1890 maps are bird's eye views. So that's just to show how she's found some of them. And also uh, mention <coughs> over a thousand houses were built in the U.S. and Canada between 1848 and 1920. Now her inventory lists houses built up to 1950. She said, you know, as the time goes on, even a, a house in 1950 is called, considered an antique nowadays. <laughs> Here are some statistics for octagon, hexagon, and round houses. New York State has the most, 191. Then Pennsylvania with 110. Michigan, 105. Every state has at least one, except Arkansas, Idaho, New Mexico, and Wyoming. There are now at least 84 octagon houses listed on the National Register of Historic Places, and New York State has 14 of them. In 2017, the number of old houses still standing is 516 in the U.S. So many of them have, they're just, they disappeared. 
and the number of documented houses, she has now 1,241 that mm -hmm. did exist. Carl Schmidt, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, he was from Rochester area. He wrote a book titled The Octagon Fad and described the architectural design that was popular mainly in the 1850s and 1860s. This woman, this Ellen Puerzer, corresponded with him a lot and continued on with his work. So that's how she really got her background. And nobody promoted it more than Orson Fowler, who was born in New York State. He was a man of many interests, and I will tell you about him in a minute. Octagonal houses were not a new concept when Orson Fowler became interested in them in the 1840s. Here's, a, here's an, an octagon structure in Athens. It was built in 50 BC. Uh, it's an octagonal clock tower known as the Tower of the Wind. Uh, it has sundials, a water clock, and a wind vane. Many of the Dutch who settled in New York, especially around Albany, constructed octagonal churches because they were very popular in Holland. Newton, uh, there are hardly any left, I don't know if any left. Dutch church in Little Falls, but that was one, and I'm, I'm not sure they have them in uh, Holland anymore. I don't know, I should do some research on that. This was Thomas Jefferson's building, Poplar Forest, his retreat in Virginia. It was built between 1806 and 1823. It is now being restored <coughs> to its original design. There were some octagonal toll houses in Philadelphia built in 1835. Now, a few words about Orson Fowler, who was very instrumental in promoting and building octagon houses. He was born October 11th. 1809 in Cohocton, which is near Bath in Steuben County. He died in 1887. <coughs> there were few ideas in the 19th century that Fowler didn't like. He was interested in memory and in, in intellectual improvement, heredity and betterment of the species. He was a temperance man and was opposed to tight lacing for women. <laughs> he believed that humankind was able to better itself. He liked water cures for health, deep breathing, and advocated for physical exercise. He promoted the benefits of fresh air, and he believed in proper ventilation of buildings at a time when people closed all windows to keep out the night vapors. He proposed that food be prepared carefully and that immorality be shunned. He did not join the battle over abolition, nor did he engage in politics. This is smart. <laughs> but those were about the only two areas where he didn't join in. He was interested in almost everything else. In fact, he was a man ahead of his time. He did get in trouble later in life when he published a book titled Creative and Sexual Science in 1870. He believed in sexual freedom, which didn't go over too well with the Victorian sensibilities, and it really led to his downfall with the general public. He was married three times, and I read one comment that stated, he seemed to like a polygamal lifestyle as well as polygonal structures. <laughs> He's remembered, he was really quite a good looking man. <laughs> He's remembered mainly for two interests. His promotion of a pseudoscience of phrenology and an, as an advocate for octagonal buildings. At Amherst College, he heard an Austrian doctor speak about analyzing character by an examination of the cranium. He gave up his thought of being a preacher and began to study phrenology. Phrenology, the study of the mind based on the assumption that the mental faculties and traits of a human being are manifested in the shape of his skull. The bumps on a skull reveal an individual's skills and traits and allow the reader to know the person's character. He made a lot of money 
uh, feeling people's heads. <laughs> now here's a list of some of the people who came to have their heads felt. You can see every, they've got everything up there. Actually, he may not have been no, too far there. off with there was so much research now with the brain, you know, maybe he knew more than they thought. People who came to have their heads felt. Horace Greeley, James Garfield, John Brown, Oliver Wendell Holmes, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Walt Whitman. Um, he published Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass, by the way, Orson Fowler did. Uh, Clara Barton and Brigham Young. Mark Twain was not taken in by it. He <laughs> went first with an assumed name and was told he had a deep cavity that meant he had no sense of humor. <laughs> when he, he went later with his own name and was told he had a bump the size of Mount Everest and he had the most sense of humor any person could have. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, after his years of success as a phrenologist, and by the way, this is his institute in New York City. I mean, it was a big thing. You can see these three, four stories here. Anyway, after his success as that, he had the money to pursue his interest in octagon houses. He began writing his book, A Home for All, or it's called The Gravel Wall and Octagon Mode of Building. In 1850, he took a trip to Milton, Wisconsin, and became acquainted with Joseph Goodrich, who had a hexagonal house built with a concrete using cement, sand, stones, and gravel, thoroughly mixed, wet, and placed between boards to form his walls. Once it dried, he would move the boards above and pour more concrete. Fowler called this type of wall grout and became very enthusiastic about it. He finished his house in 1853 and used grout for the walls. This Milton house is kind of interesting to me because I've been there, I had an aunt, an uncle who lived here, and uh, this is what it looks like today. But it's not famous now for this grout. It's famous because it was a place where the slaves, they had a secret uh, tunnel underneath. Mm -hmm. and I mean, it's documented that they really came here. So that's, it's in Wisconsin. <coughs> this was a period of ar architectural changes. Victorian style was replacing the Greek revival. People were receptive to new ideas and styles, Italian villas, rural Gothic cottages, Elizabethan mansions, all kinds of houses were being built. Fowler praised the octagon house in many ways. Now this is one of the very first illustrations. It was in a magazine called the Rural, More Rural Magazine, M-O-O-R-E. And it was really the first time that people were seeing this type of house. Um, this is how he's, Fowler praised it in many ways enclosed more space for its walls than the square. He suggested to raise the first floor and enter through the basement to eliminate the cold winter winds. This one, you can't really see if the basement's up there or not. Maybe it was, I don't know. It received twice as much sunlight through the windows <coughs> and eight walls. In the summer, the rooms were cooled by opening the windows on the side from which the wind blew. It could have a center, or should have a center staircase and by opening the stair hall doors in the center of the house and the cupola windows on the roof, it creates a draft that would ventilate the entire house. Mm -hmm. Encircling porches were a favorite with Fowler. Now this one doesn't really have all the things that he mentions it should have, but here it was, mm -hmm. said it was in Baldwin's bill. Somebody mm -hmm. had this, and this, this was the plan. You can see pretty open, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and they're all just rooms, parlor, sitting, dining room. And notice in the corners there, these little things, those were uh, closets, mm -hmm. and they were all triangular. And mm -hmm. up in the second floor, too, goes through the closets. Mm -hmm. This did not have a circular staircase, this particular plan. But that, in this 16 there, would be open up to the cupola. 
but that's the plan of that one. This one, the staircase was here. I think nine was supposed to be the kitchen, wasn't it? I can't remember. Pantry? Pantry. Pantry. Yeah. <laughs> kitchen. Well, one of those was the kitchen. Sixteen feet they were. But you see the build, the rooms themselves were mostly rectangular. Anyway, that was the first thing. This is Orson Fowler's house. <laughs> he built this in Fishkill, New York. Uh, it's, I have a little description, I won't read the whole thing, but it, was, it must have been something to see this. <laughs> the house stood 80 feet tall and consisted of three stories and a basement that was almost wholly above ground. Now that one is, yeah, isn't it? Good. The ground floor featured four larger rooms which surrounded a central staircase. Fitted with folding doors, any two rooms could be joined. There's a, re a real photograph of it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. To provide, two rooms could be joined to provide a 39 by 44 <coughs> foot space. And if, if a larger area was needed, all four rooms could convert into one large hall that would accommodate 200 people. Those four middle ones there. Uh, the 20 foot high, 21 foot diameter cupola with a glass top that topped the house offered views of the Catskill Mountains. He didn't live here very long and he soon opened the house to boarders. And just before the start of the Civil War, when military schools were being established, uh, the house was leased and filled with military students. In 1861 and 1862, the boys marched to the village in full uniform to entertain locals. In 1863, he left here and relocated to Massachusetts. The Octagon House passed through several owners over the next 20 years. And I, you don't have to read this, but it was the idea it was near the end. It was taken over by young people. It was deserted, abandoned. And it said the young people, uh, held high carnival in the deserted rooms. <laughs> the old building was illuminated from turret to foundation and presented a picture as grand as it was unusual. Dancing was kept up. I can imagine if it was filled with teenagers, whatever. <laughs> and then the next little news item. Nearly a dozen dynamite cartridges were used to cause the large stone walls of the building to sway and fall. <laughs> And you see, 1897, it was gone. So that's Orson Fowler, a very interesting man, I must say. Uh, <coughs> very few octagonal <coughs> houses were built that followed all the re recommendations of Fowler. The idea of the entrance in the basement is rarely found. And also the kitchen in the basement was not followed much. Some houses were encircled with a one-story porch, but very few had two. Most had a porch around three of the sides and a rear porch around one side. Less than 50% had a central stair hall. Many houses were small, with sides less than 16 feet, so a central stair hall was not practical. Most of the octagons were simple houses. None had elaborate entrances. Often simple sawed wood back brackets support the overhanging <coughs> cornice. Now this is just a school, Dryden, you probably, maybe you know this, I don't know if you've seen it. Brick. I don't, uh, there's a few schoolhouses that were octagonal. Here's one, my husband and I went down here to see this new cane in Pennsylvania. It's out in the boondocks and I, they don't know what to do with it. <laughs> but it's so pretty. It's not on the historic register, anything. Oh, wow. uh, they don't, I see the paperwork. They, they try to get it on the historical register, but it isn't yet. <laughs> this is a plan of a schoolhouse and I think it's very bad because the out, the one, the benches there that are next to the windows, they face out. <laughs> so, and poor people that sat one side where the window isn't, it doesn't seem right. And then the, the interior rows, those are, they face in. So that would be all right, but the teachers, and the stove in the front. The, this is a much better layout <laughs> for a school. This is one of the designs made. This church. It, it's good. Mm -hmm. I would think that would work out quite well for a church. Now, those are just some of the schools and the churches. Um, 
I know the most about Shenango County, so I'm going to go through these very quickly. Shenango County has uh, nine. Actually, it has ten if I count the real modern one that I found. <laughs> but uh, the only other county I looked through her book, the only other county that has more is Onondaga. They have a lot. But this is in green. This one is, this is the oldest picture we have of it. 1868, we don't really know when it was built. But, you know, 1850s, 1860s, definitely. This is when it was white, and now it's green, <laughs> or blue, and it's a cheese trap, and it's for sale. If anybody would like to, anyone would like to buy it, I'm sure they'd love to sell it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's nice, nice. It's been added on things. This is a really nice picture that I like. I, I found this and I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I think it was on eBay. But I thought, what is that? What is this thing here? You know, Well, it's the Shenango Canal going through green. Mm -hmm. And this is the aqueduct across the mm -hmm. Shenango River. Yeah. And it came over here. This is the main drag, North Shenango Street. And then it came over here, and there's the canal going right up. And this is the road, Route 12 to Norwich, up there. Uh, so this is looking north. Yeah. I just, I've never seen it. Not, I've never seen it since. Anyway, this is a stereopticon or stereographic. Mm -hmm. oh, I just took the one side of it. But there's the octagon. And there's, they call them inkwells sometimes. <laughs> so that's a neat picture it was. Now, bird's eye view of green. This is interesting. <coughs> Here is where, this is where the library is now, if you know green at all. Genesee Street's the mm -hmm. main street up here. And this is Moore Memorial Library, which this house was moved down, way down here. Mm -hmm. And this became the Raymond Manor for the Raymond Corporation. This mm -hmm. is no longer. Mm -hmm. In existence. <coughs> but looking at this picture, Ellen was looking at it, this lady who wrote the book. She said, what's that octagon? I said, I have no idea. I did not know that existed in green. <laughs> said, I don't know. Well, here's a Sanborn map. You know the Sanborn mm -hmm. maps were made for fire <coughs> insurance? Yep. And this one is 1897, mm -hmm. and this is where the library is. It hadn't been built yet. It was built in 1903. And look at that. Mm -hmm. And it says on it, I figured out, hen hole, H O. Hen house. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 the chicken house. In green and didn't know it. And I found out uh, after this, I read, they're very, very good for a chicken house with all the sides and the windows and the ventilation. And I, quite a few chicken houses were octagonal. Norwich. Mm -hmm. Very nice one. Brick. Mm -hmm. mm. Coventry. Mm -hmm. Built 1860 by the Phillips family were very well to do. A lot of ginger. They were they there. were mm -hmm. yeah, this one does, isn't it? But unfortunately, mm -hmm. this is what it looks like today. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lady that owns this would just love to sell this place. Mm -hmm. You know, it's I guess they're hard to maintain. I don't know, but uh, not in good condition at all. That's a, excuse me, but would you go back? That's a unique way they've got for the side the, the, the door. Side mm -hmm. door yes. Yeah. yes, it is. I've seen a couple others that were like that, but you, know, you have to pick that had the porch all the way around. Mm -hmm. This one's in Oxford. Um, this is interesting. This is how it looked built in the 1850s. The kitchen and dining room were housed in the cellar, so there's one that did have the cellar. But this has been changed so much. There it is in the bird's eye, yeah. which is about the same. But this is what it looks like now. They took off the cupola and they raised it up, so it would be like the two floors there. And uh, it says after 1910 this was done. This is the other, you know, I'm just looking there, Ibiki. That's, is that the same as this one? I have to, yeah, I think, I think so. I think that 
got to take that other bird's eye out. This is the other bird's eye view of the other house in Oxford. Oxford has two. And this one still has the two <coughs> floors. Now, I think that bird's eye, i got to get out of there. And the Lindsley House near Lime Kiln. You want to tell about that, please? Just that he, he was a Civil War soldier, and when he came home, he started a lime mill or a lime kiln there. And it wasn't very far from the canal. And he built this house, and people were upset because when they were finished with uh, making the lime, they would have this massive pile. So they put it in the house and mm -hmm. used it as part of the grout mm -hmm. in the house. Mm -hmm. And that's how they got rid of some of it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. South Otsila. Mm -hmm. Now, South Otsila is a tiny place. They have two. <laughs> <laughs> they have two. This one now is a bed and breakfast. It's right on the main Route 26 going through South Otsila. This is the inside of one of the walls. It's very nice. I, I've not been in it, but I know that it looks nice. And this is the other one. And this is up on a hill in South Otsila. It's a beautiful view of the village. This one has deteriorated, but this was where the Gladding Fishing Museum was. If anyone ever remembers, there was a big Gladding Fishing Company in South Otsila. That's what it looks like today. <coughs> when, when uh, years ago, <coughs> when I went inside that building before Gladding, well, Gladding bought it, uh -huh. and they were going to refurbish it for the museum. And in the meantime, the boys from the high school uh -oh. <laughs> got inside, mm -hmm. and they decided that they would paint the inside. Mm -hmm. But they went up the center staircase yes. to the top and poured the cans of paint down the staircase to the first floor. Mm -hmm. oh, and uh, the punishment was that they had to use a very small uh, scraping material tool that I might be using to do a floorboard or something when they had to scrape all the paint off, all mm -hmm. the railings from the top to the bottom. Oh so my goodness. That's cool. Yeah. The, the museum didn't last very No, long. it didn't last very long. I, I was there once, I remember. The, that chandelier was supposed to be beautiful that mm -hmm. was there in the center. It's gone. I don't know what's in there. I didn't get very close to it because they told me that some older man lives there and he's not pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> and I usually go up, you know, I, maybe it was on his property when I took that other picture. But Well, there was two or three rentals were in it before the museum bought it, so it was in dire condition in dire. when they bought it to make yeah. the museum. Mm, yeah. It's too bad, too bad. And you'll see later why it's too bad. Uh, Guilford. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, I think mm -hmm. the history of it was a merchant that owned this. I don't know anything about it, really. <coughs> this I took a picture in the winter. Mm -hmm. Not this one, or a couple, I think last one I did that. Now, this is the one that's so badly, I just feel badly about this because oh, Sherburne. Mm -hmm. in Sherburne, they had this beautiful mm -hmm. octagon that had the circular staircase. Mm -hmm. It was the only one that had the circular staircase, and it proved too costly to maintain. The American Legion bought it, mm -hmm. and they tore it down in 1965 to build the present Legion mm -hmm. home. Many thought it was a mistake, but oh, I guess yes. it was expensive to keep it, but it's too bad. This was the inside, first floor plan. You can see the circular staircase. So, too bad. Built in 1841, it says. I found this one, just driving around. It's near North Afton. It is in Shenango County. And I did go up and ask, and they told me it was about 15 years old. They, I went in it. It's very nice. It's, a small, it's a, built on a slab. So, uh, is that Cinder Yeah, Cinder Yeah, what did mm -hmm. they tell me, Weeman? I got what they called it. Maybe you people know more than I do. It's called slab, uh, split face blocks. Does that mean anything? <laughs> split face blocks. It was very nice. But yes, it is. It's cement blocks. I liked it. It's on a, it has a very nice setting. They have a beautiful view. Mm -hmm. so. Did they say why they built an octagon? No, mm -hmm. they didn't. Probably for the view. Uh, maybe. I don't know why. Yeah. Actually, it's not a bad, I bad design. <laughs> no. no. Every room's got a view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was. I found this one too, just driving around where that new one was. It's a silo. It's pretty. Exactly. 
They took the silo and made this oh, nice yeah. round house. It was mm -hmm. nice. I thought it was near Bainbridge. And this one on uh, North Fenton, it's just another octagon. Uh -huh. No, it's like one of those it? domes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 <coughs> okay, now on <laughs> to Cortland <laughs> County. I just put the roundhouse in in Marathon. I'm sure you all have gone by that many times. Mm -hmm. It is at 80 Cortland Street. It's dated as pre-1865. The first name associated with it is Joseph Conger, a Cooper, and one of the founders of the Baptist Church in Marathon. It is speculated that the building was erected as a type of advertisement for Conger's trade. <laughs> you know, I don't know, that's pretty far-fetched, but anyway, it's round. It's in pretty good shape. This is a pretty um, new picture of it. Then, unfortunately, this one, uh, I saw it in a book. We had a book on uh, barns, you know, actually octagon barns and hexagon barns, and it said here, this 1870, was in Truxton, once served as a road house. Yep. Travelers' horses were stable in the basement. This that Richard Triumphal wrote the book. It's a really nice book. And Richard Parker's the person, the last person to have lived in the house that stood in front of that building. Oh, mm -hmm. Richard Parker. I it's, don't know. Be, it's behind the John J. McGraw monument okay. up on the hill. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. house in that was okay, behind it. Okay, now Chris brought got this illustration from somewhere oh, of it. It's old. I don't know anything about drugs. <laughs> Nothing. The, house, the, the barn fell down and then the house fell down around Richard. Oh. Still, Richard was oh, still in it, I think, when it fell down. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Parker. I have to write that name down so I'll remember. Yeah. Okay, bird's eye. Uh, let's see, what do I have about this? Twin the octagon. This 1855 house in Cortland was built um, <coughs> this church this is it, was built by William Burnham, a farmer at 14 North Church Street. The rooms are all square with corner closets. The beautiful porch which surrounded it has been gone for more than five decades. The exterior had masonry walls. The low cupola has windows on four sides. Both the cornice and the cupola have brackets. The cupola is a 2001 replacement since the original vanished <coughs> through time. Mm -hmm. Now used for apartments, it has been vinyl sided. Mm -hmm. The porch is, uh, is one and a peak canopy with iron railing adorns the front stoop. Okay. Look at this bird's eye again. Do you see another octagon in it? Yeah. It's not a good picture, I'm sorry, but... Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Does anyone yeah. know? Yeah. Does anyone know what that was? <laughs> another chapel? Yeah. It's right behind <laughs> uh, St. Mary's School. It's, it's on Charles Street in that picture. Okay. It's where the gas company had to take their... The second house in the corner of the gas company is there now. Nothing can be built on that property because the gas people were there. Oh, okay. That other one looks like a wedding cake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, next, this. Mm -hmm. It's nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 26 Clinton Street in Homer. This is Homer. Built around 1853. A two-story home built by Dr. Head. It's a simple home with a cupola, and a plain overhanging cornice. Smooth plaster coats the exterior. An old photo shows a porch on the front wall with round posts, a simple <coughs> balustrade and gallery on the second floor. Recently restored, the porch is similar to the original, though lacking the second floor gallery. The double doors, though, are still there. Yes. <laughs> it has an enclosed cupola with one window per side. And there is a vertical, oh, and then I, I think this is so attractive. There is a mm -hmm. vertical board sided uh -huh. octagon barn. On <coughs> Pretty, isn't it? Oh, the, the one that you just showed on Clinton Street is yes. for sale for $248,500. Oh, <laughs> four, four bed, three baths, 2,525 yeah. square feet. <laughs> well, thank you. It's on, it's on Zillow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a 
feeling a lot of them are for sale. I don't know why. That, maybe they're very that, hard to maintain. That one's for sale because the owner's job has been transferred to Florida. Oh, okay. okay. Well, that's nice to know. <laughs> now we come to the large octagonal wood building at South Main Street on State Route 11. Built in 1902. Before I describe the octagon, I'd like to say a few words about the builder. I, I, I found this fascinating. George Satterley was born in around 1848 in Luzerne in northern New York. He begged his father to let him enlist in the Civil War, which he did when he was, well, he was young. Being so young in 1862, he was about 14. <coughs> he was a drummer boy. Mm -hmm. And he was discharged <coughs> later in 1865. While there, he learned to be a ventriloquist and then later a wagon maker. I read somewhere he learned to be a puppeteer and a magician. I don't know who he met <laughs> in the Civil War, but um, hearing of the great North American circus, he went to its winter court headquarters in Connecticut and began his lifelong career as a circus man. He had talent and a personal warmth with the audience. Uh, he worked as a magician, ventriloquist, and a puppeteer. He saw himself as a great Italian circus star, so changed his name to Signor Sautel. <laughs> his friends called him Sig, and that's what stuck. Um, Signor, Sig, Signor. In 1875, Sig set out to form his own circus. He bought an old horse, a harness, and a wagon for $24 and worked his way back to northern New York by making one-night stands in small towns. In 1876, he married Ida Bell Travers. She was up there in North New York, too. And this was the making of his business. He, he was the showman, she was the brains, <laughs> and ran the business. Uh, <clears throat> they uh, trooped around the country <laughs> with wagons and a tent. And here's one of them, and there's Sig himself, mm -hmm. what he looked like with his cigar. I'd say that he had talent and a personal warmth. I have a couple stories here. When he lived in Homer, he would go into a, a lunch counter and he would pay for everyone's meal that was there, mm -hmm. and uh, he was a great favorite of everyone. He loved diamonds. In fact, he was called the Diamond King. He had a shirt with a front piece on it of a prancing horse, and that horse was covered with one to two carat diamonds. <laughs> and he also wore a lot of diamond rings. Anyone who knows about him, I thought that was interesting. Here's one of his wagons. <coughs> Which is Sarasota, Florida. That's where that is? Yes. <sighs> By the red yes. Well, take notes. It's at the, <laughs> it's at the Circus Museum in Florida. Yes, Minnesota. I knew there was a big one yes. there. Thank you. Yeah. Write down that so I'll know. Uh, okay. Now, we went to the Chittenango Erie Canal Museum not too long ago. It was a historian's meeting. And we went into one of their buildings there. It's a lovely place. It really is. And lo and behold, hold on, look at here, this, this replica of the Erie Canal. And there's Sig Sautel in one of their boats, the Sig Sautel's show. So I had to ask about that. Uh, I don't know who did the replicas, but it was his two boats that he had on the Erie Canal. In 1880, he moved to Syracuse. He had special wagon, low wagons built because Sig intended to run his show on the Erie Canal. He had two canal boats built. One was Bell and the other Kitty. Bell was for his wife. For seven years, he plied the canal. In 1889, he sold the boat Kitty. Oh, there's another one. This these little replicas. I thought it was nice. Uh, just read the top. They traveled by canal boats. Each boat was 88 feet. They carried all the wagons, animals, and the entire cast of performers on these boats. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, in 1889, he sold the boat Kitty to a modern-day evangelical group. A tragic fire engulfed the boat, and it sank. Uh, he used the bell for his winter home for a short while. 
but I just, I had seen this picture when I was doing research. It meant nothing to me, but then when I read this, it was an evangelical group, and see, it says, good news, with rescue lifeboat, good news. That was the evangelical boat. <laughs> <laughs> it sank. It sank. In the canal. <laughs> <laughs> that tells you something. <laughs> of course, the canal is, it wasn't that deep, but it, 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 it ruined it, I'm hey. sure. So. Hey. Yes. Excuse me, but this is SAU. T E L L E, mm -hmm. it's hotel. Uh -huh. But there was also a travel agency in Binghamton. Yes. Oh, I remember that was S A W. Mm -hmm. yeah. was I don't know if it was any relation or not. Okay. Sawtell, hmm. that you're right. Yeah. I don't I know. know. And didn't you say earlier on something about Satterley? Yeah, he changed his name. Changed so his name. His name yeah. was Satterley. Mm -hmm. yeah, that didn't sound good enough. <laughs> oh well, that maybe he was related to them Thank more so than Sarge else. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this is these are Bond Hotel. Deryder, Deryder, he decided after Syracuse he would move to Deryder, mm -hmm. and he did, and he bought a hotel there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think he was there very long, but you know he did have some investments in there, I guess. And uh, there was a man that had a dog there. This is the story. <laughs> and uh, the dog uh, didn't like Sig, or Sig didn't like the dog. And this man who had the dog would kind of taunt Sig and have the dog with him all, all the time. And it bothered uh, Sig Sautel very, very much. And they never would do anything about the dog. Now, I don't know. It sounds so very strange to me. But he decided he didn't like the writer. Mm -hmm. And he moved to Homer. Uh, let's see. He moved the winter quarters, the writer to Homer. He gives us a reason, the narrow-mindedness of some of the de writer people. <laughs> <laughs> But I just, I added this, it was in the news, I thought it was so funny, I just had nothing to do with this, this at all. The, the Tully Times intimates that the wife of a Fabius farmer has applied for a divorce because he has not taken a bath in nine years. So, Sig comes to Homer, and he buys a hotel, and he names it the David Harem Tavern. I don't know, is, is there still a David Harem Tavern there, or an inn that's called David Harem? I know there's a David Harem house, but I think it's probably gone. I, I don't know. <laughs> was it that, it was at the corner of Cuba Street where the fire station and the, the recreation building is. So it's gone. He, he traded hotels with yes. the inn. Yeah. Yeah. He got out of the writer. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sig Sautel built this octagon house for the circus winter quarters with living quarters on first and second floors, training area for acrobats on third floor, and a training rink for animals in the cellar. It has a pitched roof with a cupola and gables on alternating portions. The interior, oh, I think this is so interesting, mm -hmm. was built with lincrusta covered walls and pressed tin ceilings. Mm -hmm. I looked up that word lincrusta because I didn't know what it was. And there is still a company in England called lincrusta and it's wallpaper that's embossed. It's like uh, mm -hmm. the people that made linoleum. They it's, have it at the 1890 on the second floor on the walls it's as you go up It's very the expensive. Yeah expensive expensive and uh, that's all wallpaper there mm -hmm. on the sides mm -hmm. here's another one mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that's still there yes mm -hmm. is it mm -hmm. oh that's the tin cool. is I'm not sure the walls yeah, are yeah the, the wall probably is there. but the tin's there great mm -hmm. several stories about the outbuildings here uh, I found this these are uh, plans this is his house there, the circus training house, but then all those others, a barn, a ring, another barn, a bunk, bunk house. I don't know if they were all there or not. Um, the house certainly is still there, but there seems to be some difference of opinion among residents of Homer regarding the buildings. Some say there were three octagonals there at one time. 
Well, others say that Sig raised the barn to build a house, but others say that the odor of the lumber from the animals would make it unfit to use in a dwelling, so I don't know. I don't know. If anyone knows, I'd love to know, but the house is still there. Ah, uh, oh, I want to show you. Oh, this is the inside of the house with the drawings. I don't know where these came from. The Smithsonian, maybe? Somewhere, somewhere that's got them. Um, the girl, the girl that owns the house right now can give you a very definite long-term history on the house. Good. Her, her mother was somewhat of an artist, and uh -huh. she has embellished the tin from the ceilings and the walls and the whatever. Oh, nice. And this young girl now is finishing up her lease with a business that she has here in Cortland, and as soon as her lease is finished, she does own the building, and then she's moving her business to this building. Oh, good. Very nice. This is the upstairs. You can see they had a lot of rooms. Mm. Has the house been the like with the, uh, all the lighting business? Well, the first pictures that cleared she, out. The first pictures that she showed uh, back. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Tracy's restaurant. It was a food restaurant, and the girl who now owns the building, her father and her uh, previous marriage husband built that staircase on the back of it with that porch. But I mean, has she cleared out the, the house? Is it, has she cleared out the house? I mean, house? the last time I was in there, you could barely walk through there. Well, that's because mom, dad has a lamp business and mom makes lampshades and right. they had a pot-bellied stove in it and they had area where they rented to several mm -hmm. antique dealers. Mm -hmm. So the, yeah. the parents are still in the building they with are. their businesses, but it's okay. been it was a, a vacuum cleaner appliance store at one time, yeah. and then Tracy's, uh, they had the restaurant there. There was a sale of all of their items, and that's where I happened to come into the paperwork on <coughs> all the paperwork that they came into from the Sautel souvenir kind of thing, and many of the pictures of that service wagon. And oh, good. This is a, just a picture of this Tutin. I'm sorry these are good photos. I don't know where I got them. They were not good photos. Just a wagon and two teams of horses. This was one of his troops. You can see how many he had. And, and I, I had to put this one in. He had a cat show. He didn't like, uh, he didn't like dogs ever, but he loved cats. <laughs> <laughs> because he was a puppeteer, he this sh this uh, show with whatever it was an act. He was behind there with strings, and he put them on the cats, and they played instruments. You can see the bow of the <laughs> they one cat. Here. Yeah, yeah. Really. <laughs> People just love. It said they loved this show. This act with yeah. cats. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> he, had, he had access. Sawtell had access from the front door of his octagonal building uh -huh. across Route 11. There was a street, there was a house on each side of the street. He had access to the railroad right there. It was one of the reasons nice. why he ended up having the building. Nice. So he could travel. Yeah, by 1902, railroads yeah. had made <laughs> great achievements and Sig saw this as the best way to transport the circuits. He bought 15 flat cars and in 1904 he bought 23 more cars. He played all over the Northeast, but in 1904 his wife Belle had a stroke, and this was the beginning of the end. He did carry on until 1913, but then sold out. He had sold out to several different circuses, I guess. One good thing happened in 1915. The movie company from Ithaca came to film a segment of Get Rich Quick Wallingford cereal with Pearl White, who dazzled. The glory of the old Sawtell Circus was reenacted for three days. <laughs> Bell died in 1916 and Sig died in 1928. They're both buried in Fort Edwards up north. In 1919, the Octagon House migrant workers, housed migrant workers, there's another little sign, it's not good. Um, it housed migrant workers and has also been a restaurant and an antique store and all, all different kinds of things. The days of the traveling circuses are gone, but I hope the memory of Six Hotel remains in Homer. Now quickly, I it's late, but I, I wanted to show you some of the there's one in Hawaii. Ooh, beautiful. Now this is supposed to be the best one in the United States. It has three, you can see three things. 
Those porches that said they were rebuilt in 78 for 50,000, they rotted again and somebody replaced them. So this is the circular staircase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nuts oh. Folly in <coughs> Natchez, Mississippi. I would love to go here. Mm -hmm. It's the biggest one in the U.S., but it was never finished because the Civil War came when they were working on it, and all the workers went to, to war, and Mr. Nutt uh, went bankrupt. I can't remember what his business was, but, you know, the Civil War made it was gone. So it's never been finished. Mm -hmm. But people go just to see the grandeur of the outside, and this is the, this is, would be the circular staircase in the cupola, never mm -hmm. finished. But the family did live in the basement here for years and years. I think it was not till 1970 that one of the historical or the garden club or something bought the building, and now it's open for tourists. Mm -hmm. Now, these are the 14 historic, uh, New York State uh, historic registered houses. I'll go through the props, <coughs> go through them very quickly. Catskill. This is the staircase there. I think that's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. circular, but it's the center of the house. Mm -hmm. Duanesburg, Hammondsport, mm -hmm. and Inn. Mm -hmm. There's their circular mm -hmm. staircase. Mm -hmm. like like the the yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, niches there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Geneva. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, it's hard to know why some of these are on the historic register, but it's if people in the towns, you know, are aggressive and want it there, <laughs> that helps, but mm -hmm. I don't know. That has a mansard roof. Mm -hmm. Not very mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs> Who's it called? <coughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I that's a lovely house. Mm -hmm. There, South Atlantic, yeah. like that mm -hmm. house that's mm -hmm. falling down is mm -hmm. on the historic register. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's near Buffalo. Mm -hmm. Newport. Mm -hmm. Newport. Mm -hmm. Pretty, isn't it? Camillus. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> and oh, to my. me, this is the oh, very last one. Uh, Carl Carmer lived in this house, and his name means anything to you. He was mm -hmm. an author that wrote about New York State a lot. Mm -hmm. And he lived in this house, mm -hmm. and it's the only one that has a dome like this. It's scaffolding around there, isn't it? Yeah, they had to, they had to repair or something. I was, you know, they oh, I guess they need maintenance. Is that really <laughs> octagonal? It looks like just the porch is an octagon in the house. It, it is octagonal. Huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he used to have all kinds of visitors there. Mm -hmm. And that's it, so I hope you've enjoyed this. Mm -hmm.